All right, family, here we are. I told you we was going on the road. We are still in Houston. Just gonna check in with one of my friends and see what she doing, all right? Who could it be? Let's see. Who is gonna answer this door? And you know all my friends don't have no sense, so ain't no telling who gonna answer this door, right? Hey everybody, it is your boy Lonnie Hunter and you know what we did. I just busted in on one of my friends and um, what a friend she is, right? Yolanda Adams. What's up, baby? <laughs> What's up, honey? Now, we don't do nothing but laugh when we talk all, to each other, even on the, the phone. Yes. So we're going to try to get through a whole conversation. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. How you been, first of all? Oh, I have been so good. We are proud of you. Thank you. The industry is proud of you. Thank you. You do stuff that... Um, makes people sit back and wonder how it is she has not put out a record in 85,000 years, <laughs> but yet she is on every show, every major show. You're doing The President, you're getting uh, Lady of Soul Awards, and uh, you're singing stuff that was from what year? Oh, gosh. Uh, ooh. 19 something, 2000 yeah. something, yeah. And we've got people that put out stuff every other week that don't get don't, to do don't, what don't, you do. This is just do, how we talk, y'all. Don't do that much. How are you doing that? <laughs> how are you still well, relevant? Well, like, because God is my PR. Yeah. I say that all the time. Good. And um, some of the things that you ask for, don't let go of. I have never said, in my life, oh my God, I wish I could just stop working. I've never said Got that it. in my life. So I am a proponent and a, um, and a staunch uh, believer that what you say comes into your life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I have always said, thank you for the opportunities. I know there are so many more. I wanna travel the world. I wanna meet people. I wanna be good to them. I wanna show them the love of God. I want to, you know, sing about how cool you are. Just give me those opportunities. Mm -hmm. And they come. And it's not that I haven't recorded, but I've been recording with Donna Lawrence, Israel Houghton, right, you right. know, uh, PJ Morton, all these great people, uh, Gloria Gaynor. Yeah. You know, we're now, uh, the song that we did is up for a Grammy. And, uh, you know, when... I'm doing things with them. It's hard for me to be able to do stuff for me because not just movement, mm -hmm. but also um, voice rest for an entire album. So uh, would you do a full album again? Yeah. Okay. I, I'd, I'd have to. I'd have to. I'm old school. You know us. We we're old school. Yeah. We, you know, and I would put a video out for at least half of the album. Okay. Yeah, I would put at least four or five videos out, definitely. I'm glad you said that because the video piece of an artist's success yes. is 80% of me wanting to even listen to you oh, based wow. on how you walk out on stage. Yes. You know, and that's true of, of, of everybody. I mean, even if I'm in a, a polka dot suit and an orange tie, if mm -hmm. I'm preaching and the, and the word is good, yes. you don't hear it. Right. You hear the polka dots. Yeah. You follow, you, follow, you hear the ill-fitting suit or you hear, <laughs> you, you hear what's wrong. I, I'm so glad you don't wear polka dot suits. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but neither do you. No, no. But you fly. You know Thank what I'm you. saying? Thank you. How do you put that together to say this is going to work for this opportunity? This won't work mm -hmm. for this opportunity. How do, you, how do you manage that? You have to know which room you're in. And I say that all the time. There, there's a way to dress if you're on the floor of the House or the Senate, and I've been there. Mm -hmm. There's a way to dress when you are at uh, the Kojic Convention or the Baptist Convention. I've been to both of those. Mm -hmm. And then there's a way to dress on television. I, and, and a lot of people are like, she's always wearing that tight stuff. She's always doing this. She's always doing that. But here's the thing about television. Television adds 10 to 15 pounds mm -hmm. on you. And so if you have all of this, but like, you know, my elephant pants this morning, I love them. Well, today. Right. I'll say that. Right. <laughs> right. right. 
because <laughs> it's not morning anymore. You know, I, I can do that on my day to day because people are like, oh my, she's much smaller in person than she is mm -hmm. on television. Well, that's because television does that. And what I have to do is I have to make sure that the lines, because I'm a designer, mm -hmm. I have to make sure that the lines that I want to see on me translate on camera. And that came with a lot of watching other people, yeah. knowing what fits me best, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then being comfortable enough to carry it. Because mm -hmm. sometimes something can look amazing on you, but if you don't have the confidence to carry it, you could, you know, you could be your own worst critic, Got which it. means the world will see you as you expose yourself. Got it. Now, what you said to me was key, and I want to I want to parlay it into a lot of what you do as it relates to collaborations. Yes. You do a lot of stuff with other people. Yes. Is there ever a time where it's necessary for you to dumb down what you do because the singer you're with is not maybe as strong of a singer? Mm -hmm. Or are you ever in a place to where this singer is unbelievable? I need to figure out something to do to be on the stage with them. Is, does, that, does that ever even occur to you? It never occurs to me, but I do the same thing that I do with my uh, physical presentation when it comes to vocal presentation. Mm -hmm. I make sure that I'm complimentary. Good to whatever they're doing, especially if I'm on their project, especially if I'm on television with them. Got it. I never want it to seem as though I'm taking over ever because I've been invited mm -hmm. to be a compliment to what they're doing. And God gives you wisdom. He gives you a lot of wisdom on how to navigate uh, different situations. Even in uh, places, even in business situations or, uh, you know, speaking situations sure. that I'm a part of, I never try to um, over exert okay. when it comes to those situations and overpower. Okay. Yeah, it's it, because, you know, you always want that door open to be able to go back into that situation mm -hmm. or, or, or go back into that person's uh, sphere sure, sure. of influence. And I, that's that's just the way I think that's just the way I'm wired. Now, that was a set up question. OK. And you, you answered it right. But I want to take it to the next level. OK. When you say that you come together with somebody and you say, OK, how can I compliment them? Yes. Because you, you never want to take over. No. But then you do a lot of cover stuff when people are being um, honored. Yeah. So you'll come out and do something by Anita Baker, mm -hmm. or you'll come out and do something by you know, a Tamala man or whoever's being honored. Uh -huh. And when you finish the song, it's not, oh, that was a nice Anita Baker song. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is that Yolanda killed whoever <laughs> song that was she was singing. Who was that by again? <laughs> So you don't really have that the parameters that you have when you're up there with somebody. No, when you don't. Doing somebody no, else. no, you actually don't. When it when it's just you, and and uh, let me say something about the um, the Anita Baker. First of uh, uh, tribute. First of all, I love her, mm -hmm. and I've known her for years. And to be able to honor her, to know that I was one of the people that she wanted to hear from. Got it. Here's a woman who's been all over the world. Uh, Legacy. Trust us, at, at, at least four times. Yeah. And she wants to hear my interpretation of how I feel about her, what I feel about her music. I think that is just, you know, amazing. And so what happens is, you know how we um, nurture a song. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you tell the story first. Mm -hmm. And then once you tell the story, then it's now time for you to express it mm -hmm. the way that you would express it. And... Uh, because of the volume of what <laughs> of what I bring, <laughs> right? Because you express, like, ah, <laughs> right. you know, oh, she's so loud. <laughs> but it wasn't loud, Yolanda. No, it, it was more okay. I've given you the foundation of what you know this song to be. Mm -hmm. Now let me tell you why you've invited me to do it. Oh wow! As opposed to anybody else. Wow! Because nobody else can do this. Now somebody else can do what they can do that I can't do. Right. But you didn't invite them. Right. You invited me. Yeah. So after this foundation is laid and we know this is how she sang that song. Mm -hmm. Now let's turn this back into well, who you've invited to be here. I, you know, 
That's a great way of putting it. I never think about it like that, but Lonnie said it. Well, so, <laughs> hey, that's, that's it. <laughs> it's, so, it's so real and it's so real for your life. Yeah. Because even when we're like off the stage and we're just being us or we're talking on the phone or whatever, anytime you talk about somebody else, yes. it's always this is what they did and it worked for them. Yes. Would you ever do that mm -hmm. for you? Or you'll challenge me and say, mm -hmm. I don't know if that would work the same way mm. for you. That goes into how you think about making yourself a better person. Yes. By not looking at somebody else's journey and saying, I got to do it that way. I do it on a daily basis because I have known me for a long time. Yeah. And knowing those strengths and those weaknesses, knowing those um, triumphs, and the lessons, because everything is a lesson. I don't call failures, you know, doom. Got it. I failed at something because that was not what I was supposed to be doing. I failed at something because maybe I was not prepared. Hmm. I failed at something because my heart wasn't in it. Got it. You know, and so that's a lesson. So the lesson now is do what you are passionate about. Do what you love to do. If it, if it uh, yields money, perfect. If it doesn't yield money, does it yield hard space? Mm -hmm. I love that. And so I am more, you know, of course now at 58, mm -hmm. I'm more confident about everything I put my hands to. Sure. I've always been confident because my mom and dad put that in us. Sure. But you know, as you grow into your confidence and as you grow into your sexy, and yes, you do get sexier. <laughs> I just want you all to know that. <laughs> I don't know if we when can say that. When you put the on. ER, that means you started sexy. <laughs> you, you, don't, you understand yes. how we talk. <laughs> you yes. started at the starting point, right? Yeah, and, and you know, sexy has nothing to do with sex. Right. It has everything to do with your brain. You know, Good. and so that's a whole different conversation we'll have uh, another time. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but I know that I have said all my life, my parents have taught me this all my life, there is more than enough everything in this world mm -hmm. for everyone to be successful, for everyone to uh, have uh, the millions or billions of dollars that they want. It just takes it takes you knowing what you want. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing, because a lot of people still don't know what they want. Sure. So knowing what you want, and then after you know what you want, then having the guts to pursue it. Absolutely. Now, I want to stop right there, because when you talk about a purpose and a destiny, so first of all, congratulations on Lady of Soul. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And everything else, as you see, the Grammys are behind us. <laughs> this is only one, two, three, four of them. Yeah. If we, if I turn the camera around, you'll see the other 8,600 that she has in storage, um, and then the Dove Awards and the Academy Awards, and then the two <laughs> uh, training bra <laughs> awards that she won. It's Listen. too much. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to ask you. You are doing exactly what you love to do. Yes. Does your purpose, does your destiny change? Can a person's purpose change? I don't think a person's purpose or destiny changes. I think trajectory on your purpose and destiny tends to change. Okay. When you have accomplished everything you want to accomplish in music, everything you want to accomplish in radio, mm -hmm. then... God gives you the opportunity not just to be a person on the radio. He gives you an opportunity to be a person with a media company, a la Lonnie right, Hunter. Right. Got so it. you have you you understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It didn't change. It grew. It it multiplied. It 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 bounced on uh, to onto another level or dimension of that same existence. And that's what I believe. And that's totally my belief that. Um, starting out singing with Southeast Inspirational Choir. That moved me to uh, Thomas Whitfield seeing me, which started the solo career. Then the solo career didn't just finish, you know, I, I, that's always going to be, but because of the solo career, 
the business opportunities and all of those things, you know. Then radio again, my degree is in radio and TV journalism. Mm -hmm. So back to radio so that I could be the best mom to Taylor that I could be. And then from there, you know, cause that was a joint venture. That was not just me on the air right. saying, hey, wake up everybody, it's time right. to, no, no, <laughs> that, was a, that was a business move. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank God for my parents who taught me the importance of opportunity. When opportunity comes, that means that either you're ready and you grasp it or you're ready and you're scared. Either way, do it. Got it. So let's talk about Taylor. You mentioned her. Yeah. Now, I have two daughters. Uh-huh. And I've watched how they are with their mother. Mm-hmm. One of them is just like her mother. So they're like this. Oh no! The other one is a uh, able to be a friend because they're not just alike. Okay. You and Taylor. Yes. <laughs> are a lot alike. Taylor is so like my mom, mm -hmm. and my mom and I were like, oh, you know, and I've always I always wanted a little girl. No, let me tell the truth. I wanted two twins. I, I mean, I mean, wanted I wanted, twins? I wanted twins because I wanted really? to get it over with. You know, you know that whole thing <laughs> that you know that whole thing that <laughs> that, that that you know you don't you know you want two kids because you don't want them alone and blah blah. I'm like ah whatever. After you know all of the stuff that happened, I'm like thank you God because you knew. He knew. He knew, and she's my travel buddy. I, I can bounce stuff off of her. She can bounce stuff off of me. Now, it doesn't mean that we don't have those times when it's like, well, I don't think that's right. Well, mom, this is what I want, yeah. you know? Yeah. You're going to have that. But we're not, I mean, we don't, we don't, we don't clash. We don't, um, and, and, and I know it's so hard for some moms to hear, but I have the best child God. When I asked God for the, the perfect child for me, he gave me the perfect child for me. Mm. When I tell you her temperament is so easy, she's not up and down and, you know, flighty. And, and I'm not accusing anybody of being right. flighty. But, you know, if I say, hey, I'm going to so-and-so and so-and-so, you want to go? Mm, sure. So that's her answer. Got it's it. not like, well, let me call and find uh. out what's going on. You know, it's like, sure, I'll be with you. And there are some kids who are 18 that don't want to be anywhere, anywhere near, near their, their parents. parents. Yeah. And so, that's a uh, yeah. And one of my friends was saying, uh, speaking of the Soul Train Awards, how uh, my speech to Taylor was so beautiful. And to see her face when I said that, and not just that, when I was performing, how she was rooting for me. I'm but like, her that, face tells the authenticity of what your speech said. Yeah. It's easy to give a speech. Uh, oh, yeah. But when you see the person's face who's, who you're talking about, yep. that tells you whether or not those are words for the public yeah. or words or for words. who you're talking to. And, and I tell her every day how beautiful she is. I've done that since she got here. Mm -hmm. I tell her how strong she is, how amazing she is, how proud I am of her and how she makes my life so happy. Okay, so when is the last time you played golf? <gasps> oh gosh, three months ago. Are you good at it? I'm really good at it. Really? Yeah. Cause you never, we never know that about you. I know. We never see, cause you, well, first of all, as of 15 minutes ago, Yolanda has become great at social media posting. <laughs> you already know. You could not get Yolanda to do nothing on Instagram if you paid for it. And now you're doing it great. You do a Thank great you. job. Thank you. And that gives people an insight of, of what you do, the other side of you, uh, when, you're, when you're in the dressing room on your way out. Yeah. Because what we used to always see, unless, like, I was texting you saying, are you ready to do this performance? You're like, yeah, yeah I'm ready to go. Yeah. But they don't see that kind of stuff. Exactly. And I think when you post that, it gives people a whole nother look at, how you feel about going out there yeah. as opposed to just just being fabulous. Well, here's you know the thing, and you already know me. Um, I am just so private and I protective. Know. Yeah. And I, I think it's more protective than private. I have a daughter who has to navigate her life 
in a different way than other people have to navigate their lives that she may go to school with. Mm -hmm. With her mom being all over everywhere, having to travel everywhere, I'm very protective about her space. There are very few people who have been in this space. You have been one. Um, Nightline has been one. And other than that, People Magazine has been here and nobody else has been in this space. Stop talking. Okay. Nightline, <laughs> People Magazine, <laughs> and the Lonnie Hunter Show. Huh? <laughs> Don't tell me I'm not posting that when I leave here. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> no, but seriously though, because I don't want her to think that everybody has precedence over yeah. her space, over her protection, over her, over her importance in my life. Mm -hmm. And I've tried to protect that for a long, long time. And so, you know, posting things about, oh yeah, we here and yeah, and we doing this, and you know, all of that. You know how people get all like, oh, when you turn into this girl, whoever that girl is. <laughs> and Hilarious. so, you know, they're just, they're just things, because I know there's a, there's a thin line between um, posting and bragging. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I never want to be that person, because I, we have a lovely life. Mm -hmm. But I never want to be that person that, Post like, man, and a boo boo. Right, you're living not my best life, in the right? Dominican Republic <laughs> with us on the beach. Right, right. You know all this. Right. I get it. I get it. <laughs> and, and and I know you know. And we don't. Here's the other thing. We don't get sponsored for going on these trips to you know to, to wherever. So I'm. I'm. It, it's like mm, okay. Well, I don't have to post. Right. But. Um, I will say that social media, get, you know, looking at the way Taylor does hers, um, she doesn't post every day mm -hmm. as well. So I'm like, okay, well, if she's not posting every day, you can get away with it. I can get away with not posting every day as well. Now, I'm going to ask you a question, and you probably going to hit me in my chest. I always, you know, will answer anything you want me to answer. Okay. What turns you off? about a man <sighs> insecurity and how do you know he's insecure what, what what about him tells you can you tell that on site or do you have to be around him for a minute well I think you have to you know all you have to do is listen okay males and females tell you everything you need to know you just have to listen and when someone tells you I don't think I deserve so and so and so. Okay. When they tell you, um, I could not compete with this. Got it. Or I, I, I don't like the word never because God can change your situation in a second. But if somebody says, mm, I'll never have so and so and so and so. That immediately puts that them into That immediately a puts them space. into... Well, no, they were already in a friend space. That immediately <laughs> puts them in the never moving forward space. No, no, no. We no. I'm not we, playing with you. you already, but, we've had this conversation. Right? I wouldn't expect you to we? say it though. Well, well, you know, <laughs> we've had this conversation because, I, and I think here's here's the thing that we have to really start talking about with our boys and our girls. Mm -hmm. Learn. Learn what you want and know what you want before you get out into the dating space or you get out into the marriage mm -hmm. space. Know that um, because what women tend, what we as women tend to do is we tend to fashion and mold ourselves into the person that we think this person wants. Got it. And then we lose our fire we lose that light in our eyes, we lose that innocence, we lose that purity, we lose all of that because we're jumping through hoops and see, if you have to jump through hoops, you're a circus animal. Mm. And that's not your nature. Your nature mm. is to be the most fabulous you that you can be, and I'm talking to the women out there right now, the most fabulous you that you can be so that when that person that lights your eyes up comes along, 
that's an enhancement. You know, they're not, they're not just there to see if you will, and I'm just going to say this, if you will twerk, mm -hmm. you know, no, we all can. Mm -hmm. Oh, it doesn't mean that we all should. Oh, <laughs> you see, you see what I mean? oh, <laughs> you see what I mean? We all can, but no, but that's for husbands. Yeah, got you it. know, you you don't don't give away wife privileges to someone who hasn't even extended girlfriend privileges to you. Got it. So then, are you like me when I say I hate the phrase "This is my better half"? Let me tell you yeah, why. Yeah, you know why? Because I don't like half of anything. I I I I need 100% of you because I'm going to give you 120% of me. Mm -hmm. So if you and come I, into the relationship as half, yes, that means that your mentality of you uh is not as secure as it should be. And you're because depending on you, them to And complete you're you. depending on them to give you that 50% that you think you're lacking. Mm -hmm. And we all, all of us, I don't care, you know, how imperfect we think we are, all of us still should be 100% us, you know? I love you. I love you more. That's my girl, for real. Yeah. And we did good. We did real good. This is the Lonnie on the show. I'm going to stop it right here because I feel us <laughs> on the brink of something that we should not do. Clowning really bad. <laughs> I wish I could, but I just don't know how. I don't have the time. I don't have enough technical knowledge to pull this off. I'm too young. No one will listen to me. So what's really holding you back? What if you could create the life you imagine no matter the circumstance or what others think? What if you could move the fear or use it? The choice is yours. Change your thinking, <laughs> you change your life. So if you're willing to take a risk on you to give up something so you can go up, follow me on social media with hundreds of like-minded people becoming the best that they can be. After all, we came to shape the future. Take care. To improve, to impact, to inspire. It's not what I do, but merely who I am, who I'm called to be. I am William A. Brownlee Sr., overseer founder of Emmanuel Christian Center of Philadelphia, and Los Angeles, California. I'm also an author to the nations and one of my favorite quotes from my book, The Life Changers Quotes for Life is, leadership is not about control. It's about empowering others to take control of their choices. As overseer of Emmanuel Christian Center of Philadelphia and Los Angeles, I invite you to a place of love and no judgment for we are the church. We are here to repair the breach for we are the community who are assigned to build communities and become an impact in individual spiritual and natural lives. Visit us www.EmmanuelChristianCenterInc.com and on Instagram at Emmanuel Christ Inc. I love you all to life and I'll see you soon.